the targets in my sights. My finger hovered over the trigger, every nerve in my body on high alert. Today's target was Mr. Hawthorne, a senior director attending the city zoo inauguration. Just one more second and it would all be over. As I was about to pull the trigger, my earpiece buzzed. We should abort it. Fall back. What the fudge? I lowered my rifle before quickly disassembling it with the precision I'd honed over years. But the frustration of the mission being canceled still simmered beneath my skin. This wasn't how things usually went down. I bolted out of the building, leaping onto my sleek black beast. I revved the engine hard, feeling its roar beneath me as I quickly merged into the bustling traffic on the avenue. I'm Zinnia, the top assassin of the Shadow Academy, and nothing ticked me off more than being told to wait. I made it back in record time. The Academy was hidden deep in the mountains, a fortress where the world's deadliest assassins were trained. This wasn't a place for the faint-hearted. But then again, I wasn't your average person. Everyone turned to look as I walked down the hallway. I was the only girl who made it this far. Known as the best sharpshooter in the Academy, unmatched by anyone. I headed straight to the shooting range. I needed to blow off steam. The adrenaline from the unfinished mission still buzzing through my veins. Outside the glass window, the boys were gawking at me like they'd turned to stone if I so much as winked at them. Gunshots echoed through the range, every bullet hitting dead center. Bullseye after bullseye. Impressive as always, Z. Thanks, big boss. Mr. Blackwood was one of the few senior instructors I actually respected here, and he was also the one who assigned me missions. Before I could say anything, he read my mind. Come to my office. We need to talk. Walking into the room I knew so well, down to every gun mounted on the wall, Mr. Blackwood looked at me with a thoughtful expression. Your mission has been changed. He slid a file across the table toward me. It was still about the CEO, Mr. Hawthorne, but this time the details were different. Instead of eliminating him, I had to track him and gather evidence that would put him in jail for trafficking illegal ivory, rhino horns, and other endangered species. This isn't my job. I'm an assassin, not a cop or a detective. I know, but you're the only one I trust with this important mission. That almost convinced me. Besides, if you complete this mission, you'll get a month off. Fully paid, no strings attached. A month off? Holy guacamole! The idea was super tempting. I hadn't had a break in years. The thought of actually having time to myself, doing whatever I wanted, was almost too good to pass up. <laughs> Deal. I'm in. I stood in front of the lavish mansion, trying to keep my cool, until I came face to face with Mr. Hawthorne, who looked dangerous, a stark contrast to the kind face he showed the public the day before. My eyes darted around the house's thick CCTV system as we moved down the hallway. My son is waiting to meet you. Wait, your son? Yes, I'm hiring you to protect my son, not me. But it's no different. That boy is my whole world, so keep him safe at all costs. Before I could fully process this minor change, a file was shoved into my hands. The first thing I noticed was his face. Holy moly, he's handsome! Let's see, Percy Hawthorne. Hmm, basically a weak, useless, spoiled brat. But that means I could use him if I needed any information on Mr. Hawthorne. Perfect! I'll do my best to prove hiring me was the smartest choice you've ever made. He gave a cold nod and walked away, leaving me clueless about the mess waiting for me behind those doors. Inside the room was pitch black, but I could smell the intoxicating scent of cologne lingering in the air. I don't need a bodyguard or a babysitter. My dad's just being overprotective. I'm not here to invade your privacy. I'll just be right outside the door. I'm Zinnia, by the way. I was just about to turn and leave when something moved quickly in the dark and grabbed my hand. It was him, the most handsome guy I'd ever seen. Scratch what I said earlier. I do need you. Zinnia, a name that fits someone as stunning as you. How about we ditch all this boring security stuff and go somewhere on a date? I'm here to protect you, not to entertain you. Realizing he had overstepped, Percy backed off a few steps and cleared his throat. <clears throat> okay, okay, sorry. I just wanted to lighten the mood a bit. I'll start tomorrow. For now, good night. That night, after everyone had fallen asleep, I quietly made my way down the hallway straight to Mr. Hawthorne's office. Inside, it was just as luxurious as the rest of the mansion. Right in the center of the room, a pair of large ivory tusks glistened under the soft light of a desk lamp. They looked more real than real, but to be sure, I'd have to come back with some tools for a closer inspection tomorrow. I started my job the next morning and quickly realized I was the only girl in the entire mansion. Even the other bodyguards and household staff were all men. They swarmed around me like I was some sort of celebrity, only backing off when Percy showed up. Back off for my bodyguard, or you're all fired. Percy wasted no time putting his new plan into action. During breakfast, he insisted I sit next to him at the table. 
Don't stand behind me like you're escorting a prisoner. Sit down here. He pushed me into the chair, then slid his plate toward me. Feed me. That's not part of my job. My fingers hurt. See? I got a hangnail and it's almost bleeding, so I can't hold a spoon. Your job is to protect me from starving to death. I had no choice but to do what he asked. He looked ridiculous with mustard sauce on his mouth, and without thinking, I leaned over and wiped it off. Percy stared at me surprised. I immediately realized how close I had gotten and stood up quickly. Uh, it's hot in here, isn't it? <laughs> Let's go to the pool. I stood at the edge of the pool trying to figure out if I was supposed to be a bodyguard or a babysitter. Percy suddenly surfaced from the water, droplets shimmering on his body. Are you staring at my abs? W what No, I'm just doing my job, keeping an eye on you 24-7. I looked down to hide my face, which felt like it was about to burst into flames. Percy came closer, grabbed the towel from my hands, and turned away. Suddenly, he stepped in a puddle and slipped. Before his head could hit the ground, I caught him in my arms. Our faces were inches apart, and I knew my heart was pounding. For a moment, Percy turned pale, like he was scared. The answer came a second later when a beautiful girl came running in. She froze when she saw me standing there. Where's Percy? Percy had already vanished. I realized he was purposely avoiding this girl. He's not here. She narrowed her eyes at me, clearly not buying it. After a moment, she spoke in a sickly sweet tone. Caddy, Percy's future wife. Nice to meet you, I'm the new bodyguard. I know, I know you're jealous of me. And let me be clear, if you even think about getting close to him, I'll make sure you regret it. Is that so? I'm just here to do my job, protect him from harm, from people like you. Caddy's face twisted, but she just stomped her foot angrily before storming off. You can come out now. Percy leisurely stepped out from behind one of the columns by the pool, a pained smile on his face. Caddy's a bit intense. She barged in here like she owned the place and even threatened me. Are you jealous? For a moment, I realized Percy and Caddy were perfect for each other. They were both nuts. I really don't like Caddy, and she's definitely not my future wife. She's just the daughter of one of my dad's business partners, a park ranger. That keyword caught my attention. Why would a big shot director have business dealings with a park ranger? I tried to pry more information from Percy. A few years ago, I used to go with my dad to her house near the forest. While my dad and her dad talked business, we played together. Maybe she misunderstood and got clingy. His story pushed me to continue my work that night. I pulled out a magnifying glass, a small flashlight, and a few specialized tools. I turned on the UV light and scanned the ivory tusks. When the light passed over them, my breath caught. The telltale crosshatch pattern known as Schrieger lines appeared under the glow. These tusks were real. This was all the confirmation I needed about Mr. Hawthorne's illegal activities. The next morning, Percy barged into my room with an overly excited expression. He must have come up with another one of his ideas. Your profile says you're really good with guns. That's awesome. Teach me. He was such a handful. Why did he have to look so darn cute when he was excited? Jeez, Z, get a grip. Percy was serious enough to have prepared two fake guns for the training. He missed almost every target. I took his hand, guiding his movements, and we got closer than ever. Just as the practice was starting to go smoothly, an intruding voice interrupted. Percy, darling! Before I could react, Caddy had already wrapped her arms around Percy and kissed his cheek. I've been looking all over for you! There's a party at my place tonight and you have to be there! Uh, I've got practice with Z tonight. This was a golden opportunity. Going to Caddy's house, I could gather even more information. We can reschedule the practice for tomorrow, right? Go ahead. I'd love to go. Caddy's eyes narrowed as she looked me up and down, clearly annoyed by my enthusiasm. But seeing me excited, Percy agreed. All right, we'll go tonight. The party at Caddy's mansion by the woods was in full swing. She waited for us at the door, her gaze sweeping over me before she grabbed Percy's arm and pulled him away. That was exactly what I wanted because I wasn't here to party. I quickly pinpointed the most valuable looking room, likely Caddy's dad's office, and slipped inside without raising any alarms. The room was filled with ivory and horn decorations, and there was even a massive deer head mounted on the wall. Were these things real? I searched for anything useful, and then I found it. A stack of documents hidden beneath a pile of fashion magazines. These weren't just any papers. They detailed transactions, shipments, and inventory lists, all connected to the illegal wildlife trade. I snapped a few photos of the documents with my phone and sent them to Mr. Blackwood. Then I carefully put everything back in place. Just as I was about to leave, a small handwritten note tucked inside one of the ledgers caught my eye. It listed a location and time. 
9 p.m. tomorrow. My heart raced. This had to be the site for the next illegal shipment. This was the breakthrough I needed. But before I could even catch my breath, I heard voices and laughter growing closer in the hallway. I quickly closed the drawer and looked around for an escape route. Outside, the summer rain was pouring down in sheets. I landed on the wet grass below, drenched to the bone. I needed an excuse to head back home before Percy noticed anything off about me. My whole body ached and I felt like I was burning up. I woke up to find Percy's face inches from mine. You're awake. You're looking better. Your fever's down. I must have caught a cold from getting soaked last night. I tried to sit up but felt dizzy. Did you take care of me? Don't worry. I went to med school. Graduated top of my class, no less. Impressive. And surprising, too. Yeah. My dream was to become a doctor, but my dad, he has other plans. He wants me to take over the family business. I felt sorry for this guy. He had no idea his father was a criminal. Forget what your dad wants. This is your life, not his. I can see how hard you've worked. Don't let anyone, not even your dad, take that away from you. Fight for your dreams. Uh, thanks, Z. That means a lot to me. Suddenly, Percy leaned in and kissed my cheek. Oh gosh, is your fever back? Even though my body hadn't fully recovered, I still had a mission to complete that night. I grabbed Percy's fake gun just in case things went south. By the time I reached the location on the note, it was already 9.05 p.m. I spotted Mr. Hawthorne's car parked outside a large warehouse and I climbed up onto the roof. Peering through a large square vent covered with steel mesh, I saw a few elephants and rhinos trapped in huge cages. A group of men stood around, led by Mr. Hawthorne who was holding a saw and a cattle prod. I pulled out my phone and snapped pictures of the scene below. After tonight, the guilty would be brought to justice. But then I thought about Percy. He would be the one most hurt by all this. And if he knew I was the one who exposed his dad, would he hate me? My thoughts were interrupted as the men below started up the machinery, and I knew I had to do something to save those animals before my boss arrived. My eyes quickly scanned for the power switch, and Percy's fake gun still weighed heavy in my pocket. Without thinking much, I aimed the gun and clicked. The entire warehouse plunged into darkness. Power cut? Fix it now! Suddenly, an uncontrollable itch crept up my nose. I sneezed, <gasps> loud and clear, and my heart sank. Up there, on the roof! Stupid cold! A wave of dizziness hit me hard as I tried to find a way out, my body betraying me at the worst possible moment. I slid down from the roof and still managed to take out a few goons. Mr. Blackwood would be here soon. I just hoped I could hold out, but they kept coming armed and I knew I had to make a run for it. My bike was parked a short distance away, but I ran straight into someone before I could reach it. Percy, what are you doing here? I followed you. You're sick. Where were you going? Percy, stay away from her! She's a spy! What are you talking about, Dad? Zinnia is my girlfriend. Percy stepped forward, using his body to shield me. He he called me his girlfriend. Mr. Hawthorne's face suddenly went pale as I turned to see Blackwood arriving with the police force. Percy was in total shock, but I didn't have time to explain anything before a crushing headache made me pass out. When I woke up, Mr. Blackwood told me Percy was gone. I hadn't seen him since, and he hadn't tried to contact me either. The last words he said... Zinnia's my, my girlfriend, kept echoing in my mind. Three years had passed and I had left the academy to join the police force. It was the best decision I'd ever made. I no longer wanted to be a weapon. I wanted to be justice, to protect those who couldn't protect themselves. One afternoon during my shift, I helped an elderly woman to the hospital, and I was shocked when I saw the doctor who walked in. Percy, I can't believe I'm seeing you again. How have you been? Amazing. I took your advice and pursued my dreams. And look at you. You became a cop. Yeah, Percy, I'm so sorry about your dad. Shh, justice always needs to be served, and you did the right thing. He looked so much more mature in his white coat, and I couldn't deny that my heart still skipped a beat seeing him again. Not good. It looks like you have a fever again. You idiot, it's not a fever. It wasn't a fever that time either. We looked into each other's eyes and smiled. It felt so good to see him again. So what about me? Do they even care about how this affects me? Wait, you can't just leave over this. It's not just about you forgetting our anniversary, Mark. You're never here. I I've been working my butt off for us. What more do you want? I want my husband back. I want us to matter more than your job. And then dad lets go, mom storms out, hails a taxi, and disappears from my sight. The last thing I see is Dad silently turning back into the room and slamming the door shut. The phone rings. $10,000 added to my bank account. What the fudge? 
Oh snap, it's from Dad! I have to go on a business trip for two days. Be good at home, sweetie. This is way more than my usual allowance. Does Dad think he can make up for it like this? As if. What I really want is for my parents to get back together. That night, instead of hanging out with friends, I spend the entire evening texting Mom. Why not? I have to try to pull her back home. Dad skipped a few meals already, Mom. I think he even forgot to brush his teeth this morning before work. I don't care about him. Are you okay, my little Minnie? I'm fine. It's just Dad who isn't. But Mom doesn't reply anymore. Anytime I bring up Dad, all I get back is this terrifying silence. But how can you catch a tiger cub without entering the tiger's den? The next day, I head to the skate park and pretend to get hurt. I end up in the hospital and my parents rush over. Perfect! Oh, my little Minnie! How could you let this happen? Wait, uh, hold up! If you hadn't left, she wouldn't be this upset! And everything just blows up! My parents start arguing so loudly that security has to escort them out. Oh, great. Not giving up hope, a few days later, I have a new perfect plan. I secretly contact Dad's secretary and quickly find out where he will be dining. I cleverly arrange for Mom to be there. Maybe a romantic dinner will remind them of their first date. Dad is already there when I arrive. It looks like he's waiting for someone. Could it be Mom? Did they figure out my plan? Awesome! I sit at a table right behind Dad, ready to catch the old folks red-handed sneaking a date. God, suddenly I really need to pee! As I walk past a woman at the restroom door, her perfume makes me choke. <coughs> Is there a problem? I shake my head and wave it off. Bet she's on a romantic date tonight. I come back out and Mom still hasn't arrived. But what shocks me more <gasps> is that woman is now sitting next to my dad. They look so cozy it makes me want to hurl. I thought dad was still upset about Mom leaving. It doesn't end there. While I'm freaking out, not sure what to do, Mom's been standing there the whole time. Her face is ashen and she's even more shocked than me. Dad! Ugh, I can't even with you! Mom hasn't answered my calls for days. She must be really mad. If you're not focused while skateboarding, you could get hurt! Right then, my skateboard slips from under my feet. But with superior skills, I land perfectly. Wow! With skills like that, that sprained ankle story from the other day seems kinda off. A guy steps in front of me. Jack, the hot manager of the skate park. I've always had a thing for his good looks, but I've never actually talked to him. Jack gives me a sense of security, making it easy for me to unload all my pent-up anger. Huh. We're pretty similar, you know. Huh? Jack's mom is a modern woman. She loves her job and herself more than she loves her own kid. I had to start fending for myself when I was just 10. I don't even know who my dad is. Hearing about his life makes my own drama seem a bit less dramatic. What now? If Dad's calling to apologize, no way I'm forgiving him that easy. Hey, answer it. I gotta head out. Catch you later. Ugh, looks like I've got to deal with my parents' mess before I even think about my own love life. If Dad's apologizing and wants my help to make up with Mom, fine. I'm ha- huh? Why are you here? I stutter as I see the woman from earlier sitting pretty in my house. Minnie, show some respect. This is Jane, my girlfriend. Feels like I've been struck by a hundred lightning bolts. What about Mom? Your mom does nothing but nag. Jane here is the CEO of the corporation collaborating with my company. So what? I'll never let her step foot in this house again! Snake! You are way out of line, Minnie! I close my eyes tight as Dad raises his hand. If he actually hits me because of her, I don't ever want to see him again. I hate you, Dad! I say and run out of the house. So freaking annoying! I can't deny I want to see Jack, the only person I feel like talking to right now. Actually... Don't tell me you think I should be understanding towards my parents. Uh, no, who said that? <laughs> Quite the opposite. I look at Jack, his eyes twinkling with mischief and cunning. Oh yeah, I'm a rebel. Let's play a game and see who comes out on top. In the following days, I truly become the villain in my dad's new love story. Jane visits our house more often, acting all domestic. Cooking, huh? Gross. 
What did you put in this? It smells like it's been rotting in a stomach for 10 days. Ugh. Despite Dad's scolding, I refuse to accept anything she brings over. Ew! I only wear clothes my mom buys. One evening, I come home to find a party happening. Excuse me? I wasn't invited to a party in my own house? Thank you all for being here today to bless Jane and me. The wedding is set for next month. What on earth is going on here? Pinch me. Is this just a terrible nightmare? My skateboard rolls up to the stage just as Jane steps up in front of all the guests. Then she trips and falls flat on her face. I know I'd go to hell for laughing now, but it seems like there's plenty of company down there already. <laughs> Dad is furious. He makes me write 100 times, I will not meddle in others' affairs. It doesn't end there. Jane even convinces Dad to ground me for a week. Fine, I'll spend that time plotting to kick her out of our house. But before I can come up with another plan, that night, my dad comes into my room and says, I want you to study abroad. I'm not surprised. It's definitely that witch Jane's <laughs> stupid idea. She wants to get rid of me so she can manipulate dad easier. I sneak out of the house. I need to find her and set things straight. But the person who shows up next leaves me in disbelief. Mom, I'm out. Skateboarding at night might just land you in trouble. I have to clamp my hand over my mouth to stop from screaming. Turns out all this time I've been pouring my heart out to the son of my enemy. Life sure has a twisted sense of humor. Uh, Minnie, what are you doing here? I'm startled <gasps> as Jack spots me hiding behind a bush. Jane is also staring at me in surprise, but I'm at a loss for words now. In the days that follow, I'm too disheartened to even want to see Jack. Despite the struggle, I slowly start accepting that my dad has moved on. Until one day, I'm skateboarding alone down a narrow alley. What now? Two mean-looking men pick up Jack's skateboard and snap it in half. Hey, are you stupid? You're supposed to slide on the skateboard, not break it! <laughs> Typical naive kid. Where's your mom? She owes us big time. Who, uh, who are you guys? What did my mom do to you? Ask less. Just know your mom isn't the good person you think. I kick a can to distract them and bolt. Jack's not a bad guy, though. I tried to tell mom, hoping she'd save dad from that sneak Jane. But mom thought I was just trying to sabotage dad to bring my parents back together. Meanwhile, dad ignored me when he found out I snuck out the night before. Ugh, so frustrating. But I wasn't about to let it go. That night, I waited for Jack to leave the house so I could sneak inside. I slipped into Jane's office like a ninja. Just as I opened the door, a loud alarm blared and red lights flashed around the room. Suddenly, a hand grabbed my collar, nearly scaring the life out of me. Be quiet, we're both screwed. I can't believe you'd take such a risk. If I hadn't come back, you'd be toast. But your hair is tickling my nose! Jack turned around and our faces were inches apart. The awkwardness overpowered the fear. I was so embarrassed, I practically jumped out of my skin. I... I... I knew you were bad. I glanced at Jack still neatly tucked in the closet and he motioned for me to be quiet. After the wedding, your dad's company will be mine too. Your dad is as foolish as any other man. You came all this way finally knowing the truth, huh? But will your dad ever believe you now? What goes around comes around. I don't care when it comes for me, but you, you better behave and go study abroad. Your parents would be so disappointed to know you broke into my house to steal. Then she threw me out of the house. My plan to expose her failed, but what about Jack? Would he help me? Do what she says. The news of my sudden decision to study abroad shocked both my dad and mom. That day, Jane also came with my dad. My mom was crying helplessly, watching my dad with utmost disdain. Meanwhile, I was still waiting for someone. Would he come for me? As the final boarding call sounded, I sadly kissed my mom goodbye and turned to leave. Wait! Jack! Why are you here? <laughs> Why are the police here? Because we're going to expose you! Minnie gave me the courage to do this. Without her, I would have lived in guilt, covering up my mother's vile crimes. But how could this be? How did you kids find out? I was blown away by Dad's sudden shift in attitude. Not just me, everyone there couldn't believe what was happening. Was this a Hollywood movie? Huh? Dad, you're helping the police investigate Jane? Was everything just an act? That wedding story! Yes, exactly. I was ordered to keep it absolutely secret, even from you and your mom. The last thing Dad expected was my overreaction. But that actually helped. She completely let her guard down. And that's why you deliberately strained our relationship. Yes. I'm sorry, my love. 
I was relieved that in the end, my parents weren't drifting apart. But right now, I needed to meet someone. He really needed someone to talk to. Oh, hello to you all watching MDA. Let me ask you this. Isn't he just too handsome? God, this is Cody, my crush since the start of middle school. Handsome, fun, talented, and such a gentleman. The problem is, I'm way too shy to express my feelings. Look who's fallen in love. <laughs> Want to play a game with me? I promise you'll like it. Wh what do you want, Zora? Let's bet who'll become Cody's girlfriend. If I win, I'd be delighted if you do all my homework for the next term. And maybe carry my bags when Cody takes me shopping? <laughs> Sounds fun, right? I'm not free. Give me back my notebook. Oh, no! Oops, not my fault. Oh, here's a shocker for you. Cody's about to enroll in military school. Good luck. <laughs> Zora just said, what? Well, I went all out training like crazy to get into the same military school as Cody. In Waynesboro, Virginia. It's tough. I spent hours training, from boxing to weightlifting. One more thing, I had to disguise as a boy to join that school. This beautiful long hair won't cut it anymore. From now on, get used to my new look, Nikki. Pretty cool, right? Let's do this, Nancy. You have to pass at all costs. And guess who made it here? But even with all my preparation, the harshness here far exceeded my expectations. Nikki, three minutes late. Run 30 extra laps. <laughs> 130 laps around this endless field at 5 a.m. in freezing cold weather? He must be kidding! Oh, it's Cody! Hey, newbie! I'm Cody! Don't worry, you'll get used to waking up early. Cody's one of the top students here. Physical tests are a breeze for him. Dang, he's so cool! Time to be bold, Nancy. Getting close to him in this disguise isn't a problem! Nice performance on the rings, but wait till you see me perform! <laughs> Alright, let's see who breaks the record! He touched me! I've never been this close to Cody! I'd even do 500 pull-ups just for this! Before dinner, we'd get a break for personal hygiene. But he can't shower then! Just look at all these ripped abs parading around! My weak heart can't handle it! I can't even go back to my room! Hey, be down at the dining table by 5.30 sharp! Uh, remember your hat, in case we have a drill later! Oh, and tonight's dinner is... Gosh, Jack, can you either come in or get out? Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, what's this? A headband? Don't! Give it back! I'm ordering you to go to the dining hall now! Okay, okay. Jeez, touchy. You've got some interesting stuff. Ah, that's Jack. My roommate at the dorm. Also Cody's close friend. He's friendly, but sometimes acts weird. But no problem. He might help with my plan. Well, another horror for me here is the parachute training. I thought my fear of heights had improved a lot after bungee jumping last year. But no. This height is next level. God, is this morning the last time I'll ever eat a peanut butter sandwich? Alright, I'll count to three and we'll jump together. One, two... Ah! Jack, you trickster! You didn't even count to three, you jerk! <laughs> Don't be scared. I got you. Wow, this feeling isn't too bad. I've never even seen such a breathtaking view. I did it. My first ever parachute jump from an airplane. And I'm still alive. Look at that. That's the guy who never showers I told you about. And so scrawny too. I've noticed him in physical training. Is he even a man? Hey, instead of worrying about others, why don't you focus on your training? What's up, teacher's pet? Wanna play hero? Or did it hit too close to home for you? Jack takes a deep breath. Oh no, I have a feeling this is about to get ugly. 
What did you just say? Jack, don't! Whoa, what? I just blinked and now I see that guy lying flat on the ground and Cody standing right there! Watch your words, guys. Wow. Okay, that was cool. But now we're the ones who get punished. I wasn't going to hit him. Why did you just jump in? It's their fault. Hey, buddy, you okay? Fine. I can't let them... call me weak. <sighs> when the sharpest words want to cut me down, I'm gonna send a flood, gonna drown them out. I am, I am brave, brave, I am, I am bruised, bruised, I am, I am who I'm meant, I'm meant to be. To be. This, this is, is me. me. <laughs> Getting used to this place has changed me. I'm more disciplined, stronger, and starting to feel the pride of being trained to become a military officer. Jack, Cody, and I have become close friends. Jack turned out to be a sweet guy who really cares. We've talked more than before and found out we have so much in common. But anyway, back to the main mission. Oh right, Cody seems to have a lot of fans, huh? My sister at the girls school also has a crush on Cody. She keeps asking if he has a girlfriend. <laughs> Got any scoop? Hmm, not really sure. You might want to ask him directly. Useless, really. Alright, no worries. Today we're going out for a camping trip. A great opportunity to get closer to Cody. But guess what happened there? Mean Zora showed up! Jeez, I totally forgot the girls' school was joining this camping trip. Cody's here! So annoying, I have to stop her. Hey, pretty girl, do you have a boyfriend? What the heck? Stay away from me. Come on, don't leave so soon. Let me have your Instagram. Ouch! Isn't she too strong? Annoying! Cody's gone now. <laughs> Thought it would be easy, huh? Not happening. Now it's my turn. Thanks, Nikki. How did you know I like apple pie? <laughs> of course I do. I got all the useful info from Jack. But there's one thing I still need to hear from the horse's mouth. Hey, do you know Nancy? The girl who lives next door to you? She's my cousin. Uh, hmm, I don't quite remember what she looks like. Why? Oh, <laughs> Well, she told me she brings strawberry jam sandwiches to your house every morning before you go to school, so I thought you'd be impressed. Oh, that's Nancy. Sorry, I get a lot of treats, so I don't remember everyone. Next time I'm home, I'll stop by to thank her. I need to help the girls' school to set up tents. You should check it out too. Lots of cute girls there. Just steer clear of my Zora. No words can describe how I feel right now. I was about to say so much more to him, but the sight before me leaves me shattered. Zora got ahead of me. Game over. For four years, I've been dreaming about someone who doesn't even remember me. Hey, what's up? Getting all traumatized over one slap? Oh, sorry. Didn't mean that. Um, need a soldier to lean on? <laughs> That's a terrible joke. We spent the night by the campfire, singing and talking with friends until late to cheer up. You know, girls aren't as complicated as you think. Just pay a little attention and you'll notice the signs if she's into you. Like, she might diligently make strawberry jam sandwiches every morning to give you. I know someone just like that. Nancy, living near Cody. She's adorable. Always smiling so brightly and smelling of lavender. What? Don't tell me. Hey, you're not crushing on her, are you? What? what's up? Nothing. Just, I noticed you have the same scent. A strange feeling surges within me as I lock eyes with Jack. Strange though. After graduating high school, I haven't seen her around. Wonder where she went. Oh, <laughs> nothing strange. We're, we're always at school, aren't we? Phew, that was close. My second day at the camp turned out to be my period day. Don't worry, I came prepared. It's just that you girls know what those cramps are like. Zora, what in the world are you doing? What is it to you? Trying to say you're some kind of pervert? Or is there a worse secret? You know what, Nikki? You remind me a lot of an old friend. 
Have we met before? Sneaky devil! If it weren't for the stomach ache, she'd be toast! Oh, why am I feeling so dizzy? What's going on? Am I in the infirmary? Why are there so many people here? Nikki, are you okay? Nikki, my foot? She's Nancy, my old classmate, a girl! She's been fooling everyone all this time! This is absolutely disgraceful. You are expelled as of today. Oh god, this can't be happening. Nancy? But why? I can explain. Let me tell everyone. This crafty witch, she's been into Cody for years. She heard he was enrolling in military school and planned to say goodbye. But then she concocted this charade to get close to him. Disgusting! Back home, I locked myself in my room. Everyone is getting ready for the upcoming prom, but I have no mind for it. All I can think about is Jack, wondering what he's doing, how he's feeling. I've done something terrible. It's only right Jack hates me now. On the day of the prom, I'm lying on my bed watching MDA, feeling down, when suddenly, for some reason, I'm disappointed to see the handsome guy in a dapper suit stepping out of the car as Cody. Come on, Nancy. There's only one prom a year. I'm not interested. You go ahead. I have to pick you up today. Please, Nancy. Ha <laughs> ha. Must be another bet Zora put him up to. I don't want to go, but Cody looks like he's prepared to wait outside my house all night if he has to. Fine then. Just a few months ago, I was planning to wear this dress and go to prom with Cody. Why don't I feel excited anymore? What? Cody, you've gone past the prom venue. The car stops in front of the garden, not too far from the prom venue. And there's Jack, looking sharper than ever. That's the feeling, the fluttering in my heart every time I see Jack. Hello, um, I'm Nancy. Jack Collins, pleased to meet you. I wanted I to, want say... to say... Uh... Oh, <laughs> uh, let me go first. Nancy, I've noticed you since the first day I visited Cody's house. Too bad I never got a share of those strawberry jam sandwiches. Oh, my bad. From now on, they'll be just for you. Miss Nancy, would you care to dance with me? 